Hallelujah and welcome to the 16th Street Seventh-day Adventist Church online worship service and I am so excited to be here and I am excited that you are here and although he's here too I love to talk to him also so we're about to have prayer and just welcome the presence of God here and there so that wherever we are that we feel his peace, his joy, and his love. Our gracious Heavenly Father, God, we love you today, and we thank you for this opportunity to come together. Father, we worship you, and as we worship you, we ask that you would meet us here and there. God, we ask that you would move in a mighty way. Father, we pray that you would give us strength for every struggle that we may find ourselves in, and may we find you uh, as our hiding place in the name of Jesus we pray amen and amen hallelujah it seems like that's my favorite word and this is almost this is one of my favorite parts where we get to share where we're watching from we get to send some love to one another and say hello and happy Sabbath and all that good stuff and of course, while you're sending that love, I want you to send some likes too. So wherever you're watching, I need you to demolish that like button. And uh, while you're sharing love, I want you to share also, uh, because we're gonna be talking about strength for the struggle. And you just never know, there are people on your timeline that need strength for the struggle and your click may help them in the kingdom. And so go ahead and click right there so that um, they'll have the opportunity to uh, enjoy and experience what God is going to do today. There are a couple of announcements that I want to remind you of. I am so uh, sad to announce Announced that Sister Johnny Mae Richardson passed this past week and so we want to continue to uh, keep her family in prayer the Powell family and the McQueen family the Harold family just asking for God to strengthen and keep them and continue to um, just gird them with his comfort and please continue to keep the Cole Hill and Daniels family in prayer. There are so many who stand in need of our prayers. Um, this thing, strength for the struggle is real because the struggle is real. But let me tell you, the power of God is will, real. Our savior is real. And so even for those of you who, um, I may not have mentioned your name and you feel like you're in the throes of that struggle, I want you to know that we are praying for you and asking that God would strengthen and keep keep you also. I want to also uh, let you know that um, the COVID testing is back. If you dropped by last week, number one, thank you. And number two, I'm sorry uh, for we had some issues. And so it was not open last week, but for sure, for sure, tomorrow from 10 to 5 we are going to be on and popping and so uh, we invite you to come out and get your COVID test yes even if you have the vaccine the vaccine the reason that they tell you is 77 percent or 90 percent or whatever because there is a percentage um, that you could get COVID the reason that we take the vaccine is that uh, it lessens the um, chance that you'll get a severe case of COVID. It lessens the chance that you will end up in the hospital. And I know there are many people who say that they're not going to get the vaccine because of what happened in Tuskegee or because they don't trust medicine. Listen, if that's your case, you better run and get that vaccine. <laughs> because I would much rather have the vaccine so I could stay out of the hospital where I feel that there are racial inequities instead of um, not getting it and ending up in the hospital and they have to figure out whether or not they're going to give you a ventilator. Um, and so uh, this is very different from Tuskegee. This is not a black or white thing. This is a world pandemic. Scientists from all over the world have rushed to work together to help save the world. And um, the Tuskegee thing they only gave to a certain group of people. This vaccine is going to all kinds of people. And the reason that we keep trying to have it in our communities is because all the other communities are snatching that thing up. Listen, if it was like Tuskegee, then 
<laughs> only you would have it. Um, they would only give it to certain populations. This is not that. So the next time you have an opportunity to get the vaccine, get it. And I also want you to um, continue to get tested, whether you have the vaccine or not, because you never know. Um, and so, especially if you have the vaccine, you may not have symptoms, but you can still give it to people who are not vaccinated. So you want to continue to get tested. So maybe we'll see you tomorrow from 10 to five or on Monday from 10 to five. Fast and free COVID testing. Excited. We want to give a shout out to Pastor Henry, how he was there at Breakthrough Live on last Wednesday. And he is going to be there again um, this week. They look like they were having so much fun. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to have a spot, but, <laughs> but it is all good. And we praise God for that. Uh, speaking of praising God, we want to praise God because today is Sister Shelly's birthday. Would you all join me in wishing Sister Shelly a happy birthday? She's often behind the scenes. We never see her on the screen, but she is often working hard to keep things running and she lends her creativity, she lends her commitment, she lends her dedication, she lends all that she is, and we just appreciate you, Sister Shelley, and we thank you so much for all that you do for 16th Street and for San Bernardino and beyond. And so we wish you a happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Oh, yes, happy birthday. Y'all, y'all finish the song. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so we praise God for you and we praise God for your birthday and we hope that you have an amazing day, week, month, and year, and on and on and on. And so as we continue to uh, worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, I want to let you all know that Resurrection Weekend is coming up. And on April 3rd, we are going to have a very special service. It's going to be an outdoor service in our parking lot at 4 p.m. And I don't want to just see you there, but this is, I mean, you know, there's some people that only go to church Christmas and Resurrection Weekend. Well, listen, make, so get all of your, your, your two timers a year and make sure that they, they don't know where they can go. They don't know what's open. We'll let them know that they can come and join us. We have a very special service planned. It's going to be a musical celebration. Um, we're also going to have the Lord's Supper. We're just going to have a wonderful time. You don't want to miss it. And so make sure you mark your calendar and make sure you let others know so that they can join us too. That being said, we are going to continue to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. You all know that we are in the Strength for the Struggle series. Pastor Brooks um, blessed us last week and Pastor Savori is going to bless us this coming week or next week and so um, I'm going to share the word today and I am looking forward to it and so um, we want to welcome Elder Victor Woods who's going to lead us in prayer Brother DJ is going to lead us in worship and then uh, Holy Spirit lead us in your word amen and amen at this time Elder Woods Welcome and good morning to my 16th Street family. How's everybody doing this week? I hope um, and pray that everyone's had a productive six days. And, you know, I'm glad we're just here to the Sabbath where we can finally come together and get some rest and rest in the Lord. I won't be long. I'll just get right into the prayer. And first, I'd just like to read a scripture. I know this has been a trying week for, for some of our 16th Street family, and I would just like to extend a little comfort to them this morning if I could. In 1 Thessalonians in chapter 4, the Bible reads, it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yeshua 
will Yahweh bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that which we which are alive and remain unto the end of the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the trump of God, and the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds, to meet them in the air, and there shall we ever be with the Lord. And it ends by saying, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And that is what I would like to extend to the families that have lost loved ones during this week and, and, and during this month. And, and recently, we've just lost family, church family, period. So thank you for letting me read that this morning. And if we would all just bow our heads this morning, we'll have our prayer. Yahweh, we thank you that you've blessed us this Sabbath morning. Some of us come with heavy hearts and some come with this comfort to give to others. We praise you, Lord, that you are full of grace and mercy and that you see our tears. Catch them in a bottle, you say, and then keep them for another time. Father, we pray for this church. We pray for our soon opening. As this COVID begins to dissipate, uh, vaccinations are being done and, and testing are being done. We just pray, Lord, that you will eradicate this thing from our world so that we can get on with business as usual, Lord, so that we can begin to do evangelism face to face, so that we can get out and be amongst the people who need to hear your word. Help us to have looked at this time, Lord, as a learning time. We learn how to, how to do the electronics. We learn how to do Zoom. We learn how to do outdoor worship services. So we have no excuse from this point forward of how we can give the gospel out to the people. There are many different ways. Father, we just thank you that you have allowed us to come through this. We've made it this far. We've come this far by faith. And we didn't come this far just to come this far. Take us the rest of the way because we're going to put our hands in yours. Father, we thank you this morning for the speaker of the hour, Dr. Andrea King. Lord, we pray that you will bless her, that you will... Give her a word from on high that will touch the souls today, Lord. That it will permeate the hardness of our hearts, Lord. That it will, that it will give us that, that, that spiritual food that we need to actually and truly love one another as brothers and sisters. To care for one another as brothers and sisters. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you've given. We thank you for the blessings that you're going to give. And what we really pray, Lord, is that someone today that are listening in this congregation will give themselves over to you, that they will ask what must they do to be saved and that they will be led to the foot of the cross and give their life to you. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives and for the hearing and answering of this prayer. In the name of Yeshua the Christ, we pray. Amen. Come on, put your hands together like this. Come on, come on. I don't serve Muhammad. I don't serve Buddha, but I serve the mighty lion of the tribe of Judah. His name is Jesus. Come on, let's give him a praise right here. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. Hey.
Hallelujah. What a privilege it is to just be able to continue to praise the Lord, to continue to worship him and to open up the word together with you all as we're coming together from all kinds of churches. Uh, I am excited to be able to share today uh, as we continue in this series strength for the struggle. My scripture is coming from 1 Kings chapter 19. I'm reading your hearing verses one through three. It says, now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely. If by this time tomorrow, I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. And while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom's brush, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough Lord. He said, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. We're continuing to uh, ask God to give us revelation and strength for the struggle. Would you pray with me? Our gracious heavenly father, Lord, we come to you asking that you would move, asking that you would speak, asking that you would have your way. Father, as we open up your word, continue to open up your mouth. Give us revelation. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. Elijah had a few big days behind him and now he was tired. He had experienced drought and famine for over three years. He had been bounced around from place to place. There was a showdown on Mount Carmel and he called fire down from heaven. He saw a mass execution and even outran a chariot. He engaged in natural warfare and spiritual warfare. He had to pray to open up the heavens so that rain would fall again to the earth. Elijah had a very few, a very eventful few days. And now that he has experienced breakthroughs and miracles, now that he has seen the display of God's power, now Elijah is spent. He is done. Unfortunately, Jezebel is just getting started. When Elijah wakes up the next morning, uh, he is met with a royal messenger that lets him know that in 24 hours he is to be executed. Uh, Verse uh, three, it says Elijah was afraid and ran for his life while he came to Beersheba. He in Judah, he left his servant there. When you go down, it says that he prayed that he might die. I have had enough Lord. He went from shouting on the mountain to shivering in the valley. I have had enough Lord. Uh, this thing uh, touched me some kind of way. I felt that when I read it because I have been 
there. Uh, Elijah left his servant and went a day's journey into the wilderness. He didn't want anybody to find him. When he found a place that was safe from Jezebel taking his life. He then prayed for God to take his life. Elijah was done. He said, I have had enough Lord. Is there anybody who has been where Elijah has been? Is there anybody who knows what it's like to have had it up to here, to have had more than enough? I have been there so many times like Lord enough, enough, enough. It's too too much Lord. And so you know that as this story is playing out, I am leaning all in. I am nosy to hear what God is going to say. I've got to see how this plays out because this right here, this is God's boy. This is God's prophet. I'm so anxious to see how he will deal with Elijah, who is obviously on the verge of a breakdown. Elijah needed strength for the struggle. Elijah was so exhausted. He was so done that he fell asleep. And the Bible says that suddenly an angel appeared. Now, listen, whenever that happens, I want you to know, um, something special is about to take place. And so whatever happens, I want you all to know that this is about to bless us. The Bible tells us in second Corinthians three, verse 16, I like it in the passion translation. It says all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. And so scripture is given to us to help us in our lives. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, it says, these things happen to them as examples for us. They were written down to warn us who live at the end of the age. So when you read your Bible, when you open it up and see what is transpiring with the characters. Please know that they are an example to you. Uh, they are giving you warning. They are giving you instruction. They are giving you guidance for what is ahead. And so the things that have happened in the past are to help instruct us for our present and the future. So this is about to be deep. Verse five, it says, then as he lay, he slept under a broom tree and suddenly an angel touched him and said, arise and eat. Are you disappointed? Were you looking for some deep spiritual strength for the struggle stuff? The angel came all the way from heaven and, and really just said three words, arise and eat. If you aren't disappointed, I must confess that at least I was disappointed. I was looking for some great spiritual revelation. I was looking for God to see that his boy was tired. I was looking for him to understand all that that Elijah had been through and Elijah said it is enough and God responded with an angel and a message and so I knew whatever the angel said was going to speak to me because I need strength for the struggle whatever the angel said was going to speak to me because I have been there too and so I was looking for something a little more profound than arise and eat the angel told him to eat, but let's keep reading. Maybe we'll get to a deep part in the verse of uh, verse six. Then he looked and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Did you get it? Because that was real deep. Before Elijah was ready for the next big move of God, before he was ready for the spiritual, God sent a heavenly being to help him with earthly things. Hello, somebody. God sent an angel to teach him about the natural and the deep message that came from heaven was get up and eat. And then the angel 
waited for him to eat and drink and then he let him get some rest. Come on now, I came to talk about strength for the struggle today. And it's so simple that you could miss it. The angel made sure that he slept. He made sure that he ate. He made sure he had something to drink. And the beverage of choice was not ginger ale, but Adam's ale, that good old H2O, that good old glass of water. This was not communion. He was given neither wine nor grape juice. He just got some water and some food and a good old fashioned nap. <laughs> Y'all know I came to talk to you about strength for the struggle, right? God had to step in. God staged a divine intervention for Elijah. Elijah, uh-oh, I hope that's not messing with y'all. Elijah spent all this time being supernatural and now God just wanted him to be natural. He wanted him to get back to the basics. I know it's so simple, but it had to be a little deeper than he realized because it took an angel to come all the way from heaven to make sure he ate breakfast. It took an angel to come all the way from heaven to make sure he got some sleep. It took an angel to come all the way from heaven to make sure he was drinking water. Elijah had all of the spiritual stuff down, but he forgot about the natural stuff. And I know that for my real deep saints, you all are thinking like you don't have time to, to sleep and to eat and, and to just drink water. You don't have time for that natural stuff. Uh, you just want to be about the spiritual stuff. But can I help somebody today? The Bible says that the natural came first. Check me out. Check me out. It's in first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 46 the bible says the spiritual is not first but the natural and afterward the spiritual oh my god i hope i just helped somebody oh my god the lord is trying to tell you something on today uh, many of us make sure that we pray and we make sure that we read our bible and we make sure that we're in sabbath school and we make sure that we are going to break through live and we make sure that we work for the lord but we don't take care of ourselves i'm trying to help somebody so that you can have strength for the struggle and the Bible says that the spiritual is not first, but the natural and afterward the spiritual. If Elijah uh, did not tend to his natural, there would be no spiritual. Don't get it twisted. Elijah was doing so well with the spiritual that the devil didn't stand a chance, but depression almost took him out. Hear me today. He exterminated lying prophets, but he wasn't ready for loneliness. He wasn't ready for the thought that he was the only one. He put Satanists in their place, but when suicide crept in, he prayed, let me die now. Ahab was no match for him, but anxiety had him afraid and he ran for his life. This is why the Bible says, yes, we want you to be about the spiritual, but you have got to master the natural and afterward the spiritual. It is not enough just to do the spiritual. It is not enough just to do the super. You've got to do the natural. And when God sensed this imbalance in Elijah's life, he sent an earthly being to help Elijah do. He sent a heavenly being to help Elijah do earthly things. And so when the angel shows up, does he tell him to read his Bible? Does he tell him what you really need to do is pray? What spiritual thing did the angel say? He said, arise and Eat. Sometimes the most spiritual thing can be the natural thing. Listen, hands down, nobody could pray like Elijah. Elijah could raise the dead and bring fire down from heaven. He could control the weather. He could translocate. He could be in one location, disappear and appear in another location. Just like that. Elijah had the spiritual down. But now 
he had to get the natural down. Now he had to understand this part because now he needed strength for the struggle. Listen, they've done studies and they found that mental work is more taxing than physical work. And what they found is that when you are physically fatigued, your mind, your concentration, your memory, and your judgment still work. When your body is tired, your mind can still work properly. But when you are mentally fatigued, the opposite isn't true. Your, when your concentration and memory and judgment are compromised. Also, your body is compromised. It does not work at the same physical level when you are mentally tired, when your mind isn't right. There is a big decline in your physical performance when you are mentally spent. And so it is most important to make sure that you are taking care of yourself. The solution is not to do either or, but to do both and get your mind, your body and your spirit strengthened. And week after week, we talk about strengthening your spirit. Elijah shows us that having a strong spirit is not enough. We need to pray and talk with the Lord. We need to be in the word. And I've got news for you. We've got to do that other stuff too. News for you. This is what I feel like God gave Elijah in the midst of his breakdown. He had news for him. News in E W S news. Number one, he made sure uh, that he had nutrition news. Uh, this is an acronym. The N stands for nutrition. The first thing words out of the uh, angel's mouth was arise and eat. The angel came down from heaven and cooked for Elijah. God sent a spiritual being to instruct Elijah to do a natural thing. What, verse eight, it says, so he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. The Bible says that Elijah went in the strength of that food 40 days. What he ate that day affected the next 40 days of his life. Oh my goodness. I feel like God is showing us that what we eat has an effect on our lives for the next month or so. What you eat today will determine your health and strength and vitality for the next month. And I know many of us, we say, oh, I'll eat it today and I'll start and I'll do better tomorrow. But God is saying that you're going to be stuck with the consequences of your decisions nutrition wise for the next 40 days. I am preaching in here. I hope, I hope you're hearing in here. Come in here. Holy Ghost. The way that you feel today, look back on your nutrition over the last 40 days. You are probably sitting in the strength of the last 40 days. You all know this to be true. Every January, we make resolutions because we started eating at Thanksgiving. We started doing crazy stuff through Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. And then when January comes, we are just done. And we're like, we got to do better from here on out. We are going to do better. We are dealing with our nutritional choices. Elijah lived a life that was strengthened by the Lord. He was strong in the Lord, but he also had to be strengthened by food. And although he was godly, he was also human. I know y'all want to be super, but God needs us to be natural real quick. He has news for you. And the N in news is nutrition. Number two, N-E. Uh, the E in news is exercise. It's in the text. I'm not making this up. Uh, when Elijah was ready to die, when he needed strength for the struggle, when he felt overwhelmed, these are the things that God gave him. Elijah got exercise. 
uh, if you read the last verse be in the chapter right before uh, the so the verse right before this story, it lets us know that um, the day before Elijah ran 17 miles because he outran Ahab's chariot all the way back to the palace. And so that was at least 17 miles. And on this particular day, the Bible says that he went to Beersheba, that's exercise. And then he left his servant there and went a day's journey into the wilderness. A day's journey is 20 miles. And so not only did he do 17 miles the day before, 20 miles this day, the Bible says that he was able to travel for 40 days and 40 nights until he got to Horeb. And so not only did God put him on a nutrition plan, he next put him on a 40 day exercise plan. Come in here, Holy Ghost. Elijah exercised a lot. And now studies are beginning to show that when you exercise, there is a protein that is linked to happiness that is released. When you exercise, there are hormones like dopamine and endorphins that are released, that are connected to happiness. When you exercise, it helps control your emotions. It improves your brain function. It soothes anxiety. You need strength for the struggle? Well, have I got news for you, nutrition, exercise, W, water. I know before the super, you gotta do the natural. The angel made, made him drink water twice. Listen, you know, uh, preaching this sermon with all of these amazing men of God, and I know they're coming with the fire and the anointing or whatever, and I, I feel some kind of way having to preach such a natural sermon, and I know they're coming with all the spiritual, but listen, before you get to the super, you gotta get to the natural. And so uh, it ain't that deep, but God is saying, I need you to go drink so water. Hello, somebody. Uh, the angel made Elijah drink water twice. Your brain is 73% water. You need water to clear your mind. You need water to help with your mood, your mind, and your spirit. Did you know that when you are dehydrated, when your water intake gets low, it increases your risk of anxiety and depression and tension. You need strength for the struggle. You got to drink some water. Listen, there were so many times where people thought they had spiritual problems when really it was just a natural thing. When the children of Israel were, uh, they came to this place and there was no water and, and they were crying like, oh my goodness, God has brought us out here to die. They thought that it was, that God was picking on them and, and they didn't know how they were going to do it and that they needed a miracle. And God told Moses a very natural thing to do. He said that tree, Go put it in the water and it'll take the poison out of it. I know we want to be all super, but, but can I talk to some people? God today is looking for us to get to some natural. I've got news for you. Uh, uh, and, and please be deep. Please pray. Please read your Bible. Please lean on the Lord. Please put on the whole armor of God and please get some nutrition, some exercise, some water and then the S cause I've got news for you. The S in news is sleep. <laughs> and that's exactly what Elijah did. He got sleep. The angel came, told him to eat and drink the water. He did it and he went to sleep. The angel didn't wake him up and say, listen, we got stuff to do. We got people to see. God is waiting to speak to you. Uh, people need saving. He let him sleep. It says he came back after he gave, got a good nap. Sometimes sleep is the most uh, spiritual thing you can do. Sleep helps your mood, it helps your body, your clarity, and sleep is one of the main times God talks to you. The Bible says that sleep is a gift from God. And the Bible says this is when God communicates with you. 
So if I were the enemy and I didn't want you communicating with God, I didn't want you to hear from God, then I would do all I could to make sure that you could not and did not get sleep. The Bible says in Job chapter 33, starting at verse 14, it says, for God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds. Then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. Oh my goodness. Uh, Elijah had to sleep. He was doing all of this spiritual stuff, but the angel wanted him to get nutrition, to get exercise, to get water and sleep so that he could hear from God. This is the way God speaks to us and real talk as anointed as Elijah was in this situation once Elijah hit this imbalance in his life he did not hear from God he didn't I mean he could talk to God all the time but during this whole situation he did not hear from God until he had his nutrition his exercise, his water, and his sleep. That is what released to him the strength for the struggle. That is what released to him the power to be able to go to the mountain of God. It was not until he got those things that he could hear from God. It was not until he worked out some of these other things that he had neglected for so long. He could not get to the super until he got to the natural. And God in his wisdom, he gives us guidance on how we can have strength for the struggle, but we don't appreciate him. Uh, I want you all to know that laws are a gift. It is a gift to be able to walk across the street knowing that the cars should stop. It is a gift to know that I can buy something and people for the most part won't steal it from me. And if they try to, the law will help me protect it. It is because of the law that people won't just uh, take my stuff and get away with it. Laws are a gift. And God has given us spiritual laws. He has uh, given us laws about worship and he's given us laws about how to come in his presence. He's given us spiritual laws, but God also gave natural laws. He'll let you know, listen, uh, these are the best foods for you to eat. And, and these kinds of meat, um, you should stay away from. Uh, he, he, I mean, God was like legit uh, natural. He was like, don't get with two sisters. Don't try to sleep with a mom and the daughter. God cares about your super, but he also cares about your natural. And his directions, his instructions, his guidance, they are gifts. The gift of the Sabbath. It's a time to rest. The gift from health comes from a blueprint that God gives us so that we can eat the healthiest things and take care of our bodies in the best way. I saw this video this week that completely grossed me out. I had never seen this before. And what they did, this girl, she had gotten um, some pork and she poured Pepsi on it and asked uh, the Pepsi, you know, got into the meat. Apparently the parasites that live in pork don't like all of that fizz and whatever. And so the parasites start coming out of the meat. When I tell you that is so nasty to me, it is so nasty. I don't know if you all have uh, seen it. I read in the in the comments. They were like, oh, yeah, Seventh Day Adventist used to do this all the time. And when, listen, I don't know. I have never seen that in my whole entire life. But at that moment, I was very happy that God gave me the insight to not not food with pork. Real talk. I was like, oh, that's what it look. I mean, I didn't even know uh, all that stuff was going on. But what I do know is that I want no parts of that. And what I understand uh, is why God tells us some things. And listen, 
Scientists have been studying for thousands of years, trying to uh, give us the best kinds of advice. And it's taken them thousands of years to tell us some things that God told us in the beginning. And the thing about it is when you eat bad food, you won't get very far and you're going to have to stick with that for 40 days. Hello, somebody. And as you eat good food, as you eat God food, you will receive the life and healing and strength that you need. The Bible says that the leaves are for the healing of the nations. And I believe that God gives us herbs and 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 spices and foods for our healing. God gives us natural things that even help us spiritually. And when I tell you that once Elijah got his mind right, his body right, his emotions right, once Elijah got his natural right, he was ready for the super. He could hear God, even though there were winds and storms and fires and, and tornadoes and earthquakes and all that, though the earth be shaken, he could hear God. And listen, when God spoke, it was in a still small voice. I'm telling you that nap did him some good. That nutrition, exercise, water, and sleep did him some good so that he could hear God whisper over all the tumultuous things that were happening in his life. I'm trying to help you have strength for the struggle and God was able to give him new instruction. God was able to give him new insight that he would have completely missed. He would have missed the super if he had not stopped to make sure he had taken care of the natural. Cause remember Elijah had had enough. Even the angel acknowledged that Elijah had a lot going on. Verse seven, it says, and the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. <laughs> this is another thing that kind of blew my mind because uh, a lot of times when you feel like it's too much and, and when you feel overwhelmed, you know, good, well-meaning people will say, oh, no, he'll give he'll never give you more than you can bear. <laughs> but yo, God sent the an angel and the angel was like, listen, this journey is too much for you. It is too great for you. A heaven is finally recognizing and understanding that there are some things that we are going through that are just too much. And I felt validated when I read that thing. Because I feel like there's some times that stuff has happened in my life. It's just too much. And I need strength for the struggle. But this is the thing I don't want you to miss. God did not alter the journey. He did not dumb down the difficulties. God did not shorten or sweeten the circumstances. Instead, he built up the man. Now listen, this way is harder, but it's better. I mean, which do you really want? If something was going to get a miracle, I'd rather it be me than the mess. Do you want to get better or do you only want things to get better? God decided to bless the person instead of just the problem. Oh, come in here, Holy Ghost. He told Elijah what he needed to do so that he would increase, so that he would be greater for the journey that was laying there ahead of him. The journey did not move. The journey did not diminish, but instead God built Elijah up so that he could rise to the occasion. And I've got news for you. Uh, some of you need to build yourselves up, not just in word, not just in prayer, but you need new nutrition, exercise, water, and sleep. Hello, somebody. And then he told Elijah to go anoint help. He's letting Elijah know that Elijah, you're not supposed to do everything. He gave them the names of three people who he was supposed to, he was supposed to uh, uh, anoint 
and they weren't supposed to do everything. As a matter of fact, he said, listen, I'm giving them assignments. And if Hazael doesn't do it, then uh, uh, Jehu can do it. And what Jehu doesn't do, then Elisha can do. And after that, he said, listen, and if they don't pull it off, I have 7,000 that I have reserved for myself. Listen, when I read that God had reserved 7,000, that excites me because I know what it means to make a reservation. <laughs> I know what it means when you reserve something. Uh, Y'all remember uh, back in the day when we used to have potlucks and, uh, and we used to have fellowship dinners, uh, quiet as it's kept. Uh, sometimes you might see a few pieces of peach cobbler and then it would disappear and I'll come in and wonder, but the good people in the kitchen, they would reserve some for me. Uh, they would reserve to make sure that there was still a little something left over to reserve means to set it aside, to keep it uh, from whatever is happening. And God said that he had reserved 7,000. That means he kept them when they could not keep themselves. He reserved them. Listen, the only reason why you haven't lost your mind thus far, because God decided to reserve you. God decided to keep you. To reserve means to set aside and to set apart for a particular a purpose. I don't know if you've ever made a reservation uh, around Valentine's Day. Uh, you need a reservation uh, or if you want to go on a trip, if you are about to take a journey, uh, if you're trying to get from here to there and you know that a plane is going, you need to reserve your seat. You need to say, I need you to set this thing aside. So when something goes down, I am able to be there. And God says that he is reserving people. He is reserving you for such a time as this. I know you feel like it's too much. Listen, baby, just go get something to eat. Uh, I can move around, get some exercise, go drink some water and take a nap. Maybe when you wake up better, uh, you'll be able to hear God better. Uh, you might feel better and then you can have renewed strength for the re reservation. You can have renewed strength for what God is ready to do in your life because God has put a reservation on your life. He needs you. This is not your end. He needs you. Your steps are ordered. He needs you. He knows the plans that he has for you. He needs you. He's giving you a future and a hope. He needs you. He has set you aside. You are here. And he wants to make sure that when his miracles are manifesting, that you don't miss out. That's why he's reserved you. That's why he's kept you. That's why he's anointed you. That's why he's appointed you. That's why he's saved you. That's why he's delivered you. That's why he's held you. He's reserved you and preserved you. He's retained you and maintained you. He's keeping you. And he has this promise that he who began a good work, he started something in you. Oh my God. And he's saying he will complete it. He will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. This is good news. And this is a word for those who've had enough. This is a word who feels that the journey that they are on is too great for them. Listen, God is still watching you. God is still with you. He is still trekking and taking this journey with you. Yes, please pray. Yes, please put on the whole armor of God. Yes, please get in the word and stand on the word. Please do all the super, but please don't forget to do the natural. I've got news for you. Nutrition, exercise, water, and sleep. Try that today and see if you don't feel better. And listen, while we're handing out prescriptions, listen, can't nobody 
Do you like Jesus? If you need your whole life to turn around, your spirit, body, and soul, your, your everything, this is the time for you to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. You now see that he is interested in the big picture, but he's also interested in the little bit. Can you imagine that of all of the important things that heaven had to handle, that this great God would send an angel to go make Elijah dinner and make sure he took a nap? Our God is so into you. <laughs> he is so focused on you that he is allowing things to go so that you can be built up. Even if the journey feels great, God is committed to making you greater, but you can't do it alone. You need him in your life. And so today, God is calling you today. He's calling you to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior in your life. He is calling you to begin a relationship with the great God Almighty who wants to talk to you when you sleep, who wants to nourish you when you eat, who wants to hear you when you pray, who wants to answer when you call. But right now, He's calling you and he says, when you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. And so if you want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me today. Our gracious heavenly father, thank you that you care about the super and you care about the natural. Father, we come wanting to be in relationship with you. We confess that we are sinners in need of a savior. We accept Jesus Christ as Lord and savior of our lives. Take us as we are and make us into who you've created us to be. God, we come with grateful hearts, understanding that you have reserved us and preserved us for this moment and for some future moments. Father, grow us up for the great journey that lies ahead. Strengthen us, oh God, even in our struggles. And we will give you praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. God bless you. Go with grace, go with fire, and don't forget the news I've shared with you. Nutrition, exercise, water, and sleep. Take care and take a nap. <laughs> Some of you are asking how you can give and support this ministry. Well, we're glad you asked. There are three ways you can give. You can give by text. For further instructions, text the word GIVE to 909-963-0020. You can also give on our website at 16adventist.org. You can go to our homepage and click the GIVE button for your options. If you'd like to mail in your gift, you can use one of our postage paid giving envelopes or you can mail your own envelope to P.O. Box 7040, San Bernardino, California, 92411. You can drop it in the mail and it will come to our secure post office box. Thank you so much for your support and generosity. We pray that God blesses you richly. Hallelujah. Listen, I want to thank you for joining us today. I pray that you were blessed and I pray that you take this word to heart. I also want to thank you so much for your continued generosity, your continued giving and partnership, both in, um, your presence, also with your finances. And we praise God that he's allowed us to be good stewards. And I know that you are going to see a wonderful return on uh, what you have sown and given. At this time, as we uh, close out, uh, would you join me in prayer? Our gracious heavenly father, God, you have just been so good to us. And father, as we uh, prepare for a new week, God, we are excited about new mercies and we're excited about the 
this new assignment. Father, I pray that you would help us to get good nutrition and exercise, water, and even sleep. Father, we need strength for the struggle. And so, Father, I pray that you would help us to be strengthened by your word, strengthened by the Lord, and even strengthened by our food. Father, we pray that you would continue to knit us together close to you and to each other. Father, we bless you and praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Listen, I love you all so much. God bless you. Go be great.